Hey guys, Joshua here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Aftershock Forge 15 Pro. The Aftershock Forge 15 Pro has a sort of space grey brush aluminium look to it with two subtle strips of light on the cover while the insides also have this space grey brush aluminium finish to it. Dimensions on the Forge 15 Pro are 361mm in width, 258mm in depth and 27.9mm in height while weighing in at about 2.2kg depending on your configuration. The screen is a 15.6 inch 144Hz Full HD 1920x1080, 16x9 matte display with 100% sRGB, so great even for photo and video editing work, and has slim bezels with the thickest bezel being on the bottom, which surprisingly after using for a while, I actually quite like this thick bezel on the bottom because it means that the screen is just that little bit higher, which actually makes it a bit more comfortable to use. For ports, on one side you're getting a USB 3.1 port, mini display port, and a SD card reader, on the other side, there is a USB 3.0 port, a USB 2.0 port, combo audio jack and a dedicated microphone jack while on the back, there is a Type-C port, HDMI port, LAN port and your power jack. The speakers are decent because they are actually using the Sound Blaster Cinema 5 tech in them and will be fine for watching videos but if you're playing games or doing audio work, grab yourself a pair of headphones for just that little bit more clarity and accurate sound. The Forge 15 Pro keyboard is very easy to get used to. It is a tactile hybrid silent keyboard that is comfortable to type on and game for long sessions. For the backlight on the keyboard, you're only getting one zone, so not per key RGB kind of thing. So this one entire zone, you can control it by just going here, green, red, orange, stuff like that, or blue. Then you can enable or disable keyboard sleep timer and also adjust the brightness or you can turn it off if you so desire. Touchpad on this is also very accurate and has two physical buttons on the bottom for your left and right clicks. Moving on to the inside specifications. The unit I have here has an Intel Core i7-9750H CPU, RTX 2060 GPU, 16 GB of RAM and a 512 GB SSD and with that we're on to the test. In PC Mark 10, you'll be getting an overall score of 5,193, with the Essential scoring 8,196, Productivity 7,055, while Digital Content Creation, you'll be getting 6,572. In Cinebench Release 20, the CPU score is 2,426 dB. In 3D Mark Time Spy, the overall score is 5901, with the graphics score being 5762 and the CPU score being at 6840. In Port Royal, the 3D Mark Test for Ray Tracing, the score is 2916. Moving on to the NVIDIA DLSS Feature Test, with DLSS off, you're only getting a FPS of 13.69, while with DLSS on, you'll be getting 20.43. In the rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark, for Mountain Peak, you're getting 81.07 FPS, Syria 75.22 FPS, Geothermal Valley at 77.82 FPS, and the overall score is 78.20 FPS. So it's definitely able to be played at over 60 FPS for even rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, in PUBG, with everything at Ultra, as you can see here, you're easily getting over 100 FPS, like there's no problems at all. Even when there's background rendering, it will maintain the high 90s, but generally, you'll be getting very easily above, oops, 100 FPS. Meanwhile, in Fortnite, with, even with everything on Epic, you're still getting above 110 FPS, which is even better. And so you can see as I'm breaking apart stuff, it still maintains 110. Even when you build, you just go up high, or you go low with stuff rendering, it still maintains above 110 very easily. I've been running the Final Fantasy XV benchmark for about 30 minutes and as you can see the load on the GPU it's 100% but the temperatures are still maintaining about 76 degrees Celsius and I've noticed that it will just maintain about 75-76 degrees Celsius while the CPU also maintains around that temperature. During games, the fan noise peaks at around 56 to 57 dB which is equivalent to the aircon or fan noise which will definitely be on in your room especially in Singapore but put on a pair of headphones and you cannot even hear the fans at all. 
When using the Forge 15 Pro for productivity tasks, it's basically silent at 40 to 41 dB, so perfect for if you need to bring this to school or work. Hot air is expelled out of the vent located on the side and back of the laptop, while the keyboard and palm rest area is kept cool, so you can actually game on this with no problems at all over long hours. Battery life on the laptop isn't great though, I got about 2.5 hours on pure battery power so you're going to have to carry the power pack around but it is pretty slim so that's just a slight compromise for the price which let's get into that right now. The configuration I have here would cost you 2080 SGD because this is the top end side of the Forge 15 Pro but if you go down to their lower regular end Forge 15 that starts at 1151 SGD, even though that would be running a quad core CPU and a 1050 GPU. The interesting thing about this is this Forge 15 series is basically aftershocks bang for your bug laptop. As you can see, it's not the slimmest unit, nor is it the fastest and most powerful unit that say has like an RTX 2080 on the inside because they have their Apex and Slate series for that, or even the Nova if you're looking at a full desktop replacement. I'm actually very impressed to see a laptop with these specs inside because there's literally nothing in the market that comes close at this point in time. Others that have similar specs to this are easily in the 2500 SGDA and above range. Sure, you'll be giving up some slimness and have a shorter battery life, but when this weighs in at 2.2 kg and the cooling is still there so your laptop won't overheat, it really is one of the best, if not the best value laptop out there right now that I'm going to give it Primeval Media's Best Value Award. Seriously, if you actually only have a certain amount of budget to spend on a laptop and want to get the most out of your dollar without needing the laptop to be a certain thickness or weight, go for the Forge series. Anyways, that's it for the video. Let me know your thoughts on this laptop. Will you be picking one up or what other bang for your buck laptops are out there? i definitely love to check them out. Like and subscribe for more tech and gaming videos. Hit the notification bell to get notified when new videos come up and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao!